Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Today I wanted to talk about the 35 millimeter versus the 50 millimeter debate. It's a classic dilemma for almost every photographer. I know there's a ton of videos out there on the topic, but I wanted to give you my personal experience between these two focal lengths. So if you are stuck deciding, you can't make up your mind between the 50 and the 35, this video is for you. You probably know that the 50 millimeter lens has its claim to fame with legends like Cartier Bresson and Elliot Erwitt, just to name two. And the 35 millimeter has its own widespread usage for good reason. While I've used both of these focal lengths from other brands for years, I'll admit I never really attempted to master them. However, that all changed when I decided to invest on the M11. I don't know about you, but this kind of commitment made me want to take things a little bit more serious. I mean, the first time that I saw the price on a Sumalux 50 millimeter 1.4, I almost lost my breath. You can imagine the relief that I felt once I stumbled upon the now discontinue smaller yet capable Sumerit line of lenses by Leica. For less than the price of one Sumacron, I managed to snag two Sumerits and not at the same time. I'll get into the details in a little bit. By the way, I'm on a mission to hit a thousand subscribers before the end of the year. Yes, I know. Call me delusional because it is now the 30th. But if you're enjoying the video so far, hit the subscribe button below. It helps the channel more than you know. Now, back to what we were talking about. What I'm looking to share today, hopefully, will shed some light into your decision making. Now you may be wondering, Jay, what do shed, why should I listen to you? And that's a great question. I'm here to help because I goofed up big time by buying the wrong lens for the style of shooting that I was going to do with the M11. Hindsight being 2020, and if I can turn back the hands of time, I would only own one of these lenses. That being said, at the end of the video, I hope that I could save you some money. Now, on to the two lenses. It's really subjective because you can make these lenses look like each other just by, you know, moving forward or taking a couple of steps back. The difference really comes in when you start using them day in and day out. But if I had to describe the 50 millimeter, I would say it's a medium close up in cinematography terms. At eight feet away, the 50 millimeter looks like this. The 50 provides less environment. It compresses the background, making the 50 millimeter a great portrait lens. The 50 is also great for photographers that like to keep a comfortable distance from their subject. You won't find yourself invading people's personal space with a 50, whereas with a 35 millimeter at the same distance, it's more of a full medium shot, a frame that starts from about the hip. This frame presents you with two things, the person and their environment. The 35 millimeter frame offers more to consider, meaning you're thinking about the person and how they relate to the location. You're considering how they affect their surroundings and how their surrounding impacts them. 35 millimeter focal length is great for environmental portraits. As a photographer with a 35 millimeter, you're wrestling the subject and the environment to create a pleasing and interesting photograph. Out of these two focal lengths, I choose the 35 millimeter for its wider depth of field when zone focusing. The wider field of view that this 35 millimeter provides was something that I had to get used to. I've been using this lens exclusively since May of 2023, and I've come to really like how much of the environment this lens allows me to capture. Some might object to the distortion on a 35, 
but on a rangefinder with a full frame you don't really deal with that too much but it's something easily fixed on any other camera by just stepping back i started on manual focused lenses when i was introduced to photography in high school but i didn't spend too much time with those lenses because autofocus quickly became the new thing looking back I firmly believe that autofocus made me soft. The day I ordered the M11, I didn't have a lens for it. And I figured I knew my way around a 50 millimeter. So I bought this 50 millimeter Sumerit here. Big mistake. Don't get me wrong. This is arguably one of the best 50 millimeters I've ever owned. But when I took it out on the street, the thin depth of field had me missing focus left and right. Here's what the math tells us. On a 50 millimeter at F8 from four feet away, the depth of field you have to work with is 11 inches, 11 inches. Try focusing on a subject that's moving towards you with an 11 inch depth of field. If you can do that predictably and repeatedly, you're the man. Now, on a 35 millimeter at F8 from the same four feet away, the depth of field you have to work with is two feet. See what I mean? I'll take my chances with two feet any day. Side note, if you want to make your zone focusing experience even easier, get a wider lens like a 28 or a 24 because that will give you an exponentially higher or deeper depth of field. But I digress. This video is about the 50 and the 35. After a few frustrating outings with the 50 millimeter, I realized I needed to switch things up. I really like how small the Sumerit kept my camera package. So I went looking for its 35 millimeter brother. Thankfully, I found it and here is the 35 millimeter Sumerit, also a 2.5. Man, what a game changer. Shooting with this lens made me realize and fully understand why so many swear by this focal length, especially when zone focusing. The 35 millimeter is way more forgiving on the streets, thanks to its wider depth of field. So yeah, I had to drop some extra cash to fully understand that, but consider it you know, a friendly reminder. Investing in the 35 millimeter not only fixed my focal fiascos, if you will, but it also made my time with the rangefinder more enjoyable. So remember, depth of field is something that you really want to consider. Your wallet will thank me later. Now, I'm not saying that the 50 millimeter is a bad choice. Just know that you really have to consider the shorter depth of field on this lens. By the way, if you're wondering about zone focusing, check out the video that I did on that after this one, of course. In my quest to truly grasp the nuance of this 35 millimeter, like I said before, uh, May of 2024 will mark a year since I've started using this lens. So which of these two focal lengths do you prefer? Let me know down in the comments. If you found this video interesting or remotely entertaining, consider giving it a like and maybe possibly subscribing. Like I said at the top of the video, I'm trying to break a thousand subscribers by the end of 2023. Who knows? But until my next video, let's keep creating. I know you're a superstar, a supernova shining, you can see from super far. And they ain't ready, know you're about to hit the throttle on them. Won't see it coming, you gon' come through like a